Waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the up it earlier at about 7 a.m. A group from the Coast Guard. Welcome to Hashtag VH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, the search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 ships from the South China Sea to the Indian Ocean. Senator Miriam Santiago urges President Benigno Aquino to let pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Limnapoles pay for her privileges while in jail. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg expresses his frustrations on government spying to U.S. President Obama. Hello, I'm Carol Ramoran, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The search for missing Jet Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 continues. CNN reports another lead comes from Chinese researchers who say they recorded movement on the seafloor of waters surrounding Malaysia and Vietnam an hour and a half after final contact. The move was spotted about 116 kilometers northeast of the plane's last confirmed location. In a statement, the University of Science and Technology of China says, quote, judging from the time and location of the two events, the seafloor event may have been caused by MH370 crashing into the sea. Search efforts led by the United States shift from the South China Sea to the Indian Ocean after the United States government reveals new information indicating the plane may have gone down in the west. The U.S. deploys a Navy ship and a surveillance plane to the Indian Ocean Thursday. The move follows reports that MH370's communication system continued to ping a satellite for a number of hours after the plane disappeared off radar. On Wednesday, U.S. officials say military spy satellites detected no sign of a mid-air explosion when the plane went missing. With 239 passengers on board, the plane was bound for Beijing, but vanished off radar somewhere across the Gulf of Thailand. The international hunt initially focused on the plane's intended route, but Malaysian officials say it may be possible that the plane turned back after taking off from Kuala Lumpur. China accuses the Philippines of breaking its promise to remove a stranded ship from the disputed Second Thomas or Ayungan Shoal. On Thursday, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Kin Gang says the Philippines made an unequivocal commitment to tow the ship away from Ayungin. Kin says the Philippines has yet to live up to its promise. He also accuses the Philippines of sending two ships loaded with construction materials to build facilities in the disputed area. The Philippines Department of Foreign Foreign Affairs did not deny China's claim, but says the stranded ship was in Ayungin before the Philippines signed a key declaration in 2002. The official also denies the ships were carrying construction materials. The, ship report, the ships reportedly contain supplies for troops deployed in the Spratly Group of Islands. Located in the West Philippine Sea or South China Sea, Ayungin along with the Spratlys is the subject of a historic case the Philippines filed against China. China's show of force comes after the so-called water cannon incident and before the deadline of Manila's written pleading in its case against the rising superpower. Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago slams alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Lim Napolis's so-called rock star status in jail. During a speech in the La Salle University Friday, Santiago says, quote, if Napolis, as a person of interest, refuses to cooperate by providing information which she apparently possesses about the scam, there is no acceptable reason why government should single her out for special treatment among the more than 70,000 detention prisoners in the country. Santiago urges President Benigno Aquino to force Napolis to choose between an ordinary stay in jail at the government's expense or a stay in an enhanced facility at her expense. She says the Philippine National Police should stop excessive spending for Napolis' stay at the Fort Santo Domingo police camp in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Valte said last month that the PNP only followed the order of the court and that Malacanang's hands are tied. Napolis' upkeep costs about 150,000 pesos a month, a far cry from the ordinary prisoner's estimated 1,600 pesos monthly. Napolis faces a plunder complaint for supposedly conniving with top law Makers to transfer funds meant for development projects to bogus non-governmental organizations. 
A car belonging to the convoy of Vice President Jejomar Binay fell into the ravine near Banawe, Ifugao, Friday morning. Binay is unhurt. He was in another vehicle when the accident happened. Three of the four people on board were injured and were rushed to the Good News Clinic and Hospital in Banawe. Binay was on his way to Banawe to lead the turnover of medical equipment and wheelchairs to senior citizens. The three injured passengers were Binay's photographer Roman Campita, driver Sergeant Danilo Tamo, and Alexander Solis. Campita is airlifted Friday afternoon for treatment of a shoulder injury. Philippine Military Academy cadet Jeff Kudya had been charged twice of violating the Academy's Honor Code before the latest incident that may cost him his diploma. Kudya, a candidate for class salutatorian, was ordered dismissed, allegedly for lying about his late dismissal from class. In a radio interview, PMA Public Affairs Chief Major Agnes Lynette Flores says Kudya was accused of committing two other violations, both involving of allegations cheating. Flores says the charges were dismissed after a preliminary investigation proved Kudya had permission to commit the first of the two reported offenses. Flores says, quote, the investigators saw that there was justification, so it was dismissed. The second time it was also dismissed, so it didn't turn into a big issue of cheating. Flores says this should put the rest to, this should put to rest allegations Kudya is being singled out. The PMA's honor code states that cadets do not lie, cheat, steal, nor tolerate those who do so. Kudya's fate is now up to President Benigno Aquino, who is reviewing his appeal. Malacanang says the president will make a decision before the PMA graduation on Sunday. A strike by Israeli diplomats affect Israeli embassies worldwide. The embassy in Manila will temporarily stop issuing visas to Filipinos. The strike is part of a legally recognized labor dispute initiated by a union of Israel's foreign ministry employees. It began on March 4 and affects Israeli embassies around the world. Israel's embassy in the United States says this is a wake-up call to the dire situation of hard-working diplomats. An Israeli diplomat says the strike could even make Pope Francis's first trip to the Holy Land in May impossible. The Vatican says there were no plans to cancel the trip, but confirmed the strike could result in complications. For our social media post of the day, the city of Paris in France offers free public transport transportation. Can it happen in the Philippines? Our followers give a resounding no. Carlo de la Cruz says our jeepney driver's income are far too low to sustain their families' daily needs. Making public transportation free will affect all drivers' income. Melanie Joy Lando says not really. Actually, not at all. We get horrible service now that we pay for transportation. I shudder to think what service would be like if nobody had to pay. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 5, Western diplomats are preparing a draft resolution against Russian actions in Crimea aimed at isolating Moscow. Al Jazeera reports the United States planned to circulate the draft at the end of a Security Council meeting on Syria. Diplomats want to vote on the draft resolution a day before a planned referendum asking Crimeans if they want to leave Ukraine and join the Russian Federation. Western powers say Russia's actions in Ukraine are illegal and violate international agreements. At number 8, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg expresses his frustration about government spying and hacking programs to U.S. President Barack Obama. The White House confirms Zuckerberg's Facebook post on the phone on the phone conversation between him and Obama. Zuckerberg is frustrated over an investigative report showing how the National Security Agency weaponized the Internet, making it possible to to inject malware into innocent people's computers en masse. Zuckerberg says the U.S. government should be the champion for the Internet, not a threat. And at number 9, former News of the World royal editor Clive Goodman says the late British Princess Diana leaked a royal phone book to him. Goodman tells a British phone hacking trial that Diana sent a green book containing contact details of Prince Charles's household and staff. Goodman says she was in a very bitter situation with the Prince of Wales at the time. She felt she was being swamped by the people close to him. Goodman denies accusations of paying police for royal phone books. 
For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Actress Sherry Hill takes on the challenging role of fashion editor Diane Freeland in the solo two-act play, Full Gallop. G. Tanji reports it was also a journey of strength and self-discovery for the actress. Actress Sherry Hill treated friends from the press to a special sneak preview of her one-woman show, Full Gallop. Hill takes on the challenging role of the grand dame of fashion, Diana Vreeland, fashion editor for Harper's Bazaar and Vogue in the 60s. Full Gallop explores the brilliance of a woman at the top of a fashion empire, for whom reinventing style was a constant challenge and adventure. Full Gallop director Barking Gona believes only Hill can portray the iconic Vreeland for the stage. She's a very good uh, character actress. And Vreeland is a character. She's a real character. She's, she's larger than life. She's, she's, she's opinionated. Cherie had a very instinctive reading of her. So, so I go, wow, perfect. It's funny because when she put on the makeup, I, I was floored. I said, my God, you even look like her. Cherie Hill definitely looks the part of Vreeland. And with fashion designer Rahul Laurel on her team, it's Diana Vreeland incarnate. Laurel will be creating six different sets of costumes for each night of Hill's performance. Diana Vreeland has always been a, a, a person of interest for me. This woman has truly um, formed what we know as contemporary fashion today. It hasn't even begun. She was already formulating all these trends. And in, in this visage of, uh, of a caricature, I mean, she was not pretty. A very big nose, long, long hands, jet black hair, she would, you know. And then I read her biography and her autobiography, and I was just drawn to this sort of like dramatic persona, and I fell in love with her. Cherie Hill has also fallen in love with Freeland. She explains why she's drawn to portraying strong women. I've been separated five years. Maybe it's also a personal journey. And I've been alone, I'm not gonna cry, because we do that on the side, behind closed doors. And I'm not gonna lie. I am using this part of my journey to be able to invite that, at least a little bit of that strength, because it ain't easy to be alone. Only with you, I'm honest. <laughs> You get that out of me, G. Oh my God. And Rappler. An artist totally devoted to her craft, Sherry Hill goes through her own journey of self-discovery as she explores the character of Freeland. The play is a challenging 44-page script that Hill must deliver in a two-act performance. Director Barking Gona gives his advice. If you don't do something that scares you, then it's not worth doing. So I, I keep telling her, you know, be afraid, good, but deal with it. A bit of a semblance of Diana's living room that you will be seeing, and that's why we felt that. Calling it her edge work, Hill channels Diana Freeland in full gallop, not just through a physical transformation, but with a subliminal and psychological depth befitting a woman of substance and style. Jitanji, Rappler Manila. Full Gallop opens March 14 at the Carlos P. Romulo Auditorium at the RCBC in Makati. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Today we have several stories related on the row between China and the Philippines over the West Philippine Sea that left our readers angry. One is about how China ordered the Philippines to remove its stranded ship from Ayungin Shoal. But the story that got the most votes is about the suicide attempt of comedian Jose Manalo's daughter. 35% voted angry, 34% voted sad, 9% said that they don't care, while 10% said they were annoyed all contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. 
That's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, March 14, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Carol Ramoran, and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.